Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia, market down even further. So now we've got down to that $1.6 trillion mark, down 5.4% from where we were yesterday. But not, you know, I'm not sure it's the bottom, unfortunately. Now, never financial advice again. You've always got to make your own decisions. I'm just letting you know what I think. Bitcoin dominance has risen ever so slightly, so it's getting back closer to 40% now. Again, this is, you know, people are scared in the market right now and getting out of altcoins. There's a bit of volume here, but again, we see the volume come in when it's down, but then unfortunately we dip down lower. So we need to find the bottom, and it's not exactly a lot of uh, volume because again, people are just scared at the moment. Bitcoin price 35,000. I think it dipped down to 33,900, possibly even lower. Gas price is nine dollars, so a little bit all over the place. All right, has anything done well in the last 24 hours? I'm going to say probably no. And stable coins, there we go. All right, decred of all things is up ever so slightly. Uh, and Leo and even Luna ever so slightly. But I don't know if these are going to hold. We'll have to wait and see. And then it's basically just the stable coins. So I guess we've got to get to the losses. What has been hammered the worst in the top 100? There you go. Theta getting absolutely brutalized. They've really been punished. Uh, people getting out of that quick. Aave, $150. So it's way below, not way below, but it's definitely below my sort of buying price of uh, $169. So I am going to start looking at Aave. But again, I'm not going too crazy on anything just yet. I have pitched a few dollars at a few things here and there. But again, nothing too crazy. Really just kind of holding and waiting to see. But look, double digit losses. You know, Gala again. I really, you know, I took a loss on that, but it was a small loss. And I'm glad I got out of it. Not because I don't like Gala anymore. I still think Gala's right. Again, the tokenomics worry me. But it was just the whole gaming and metaverse space is really, you know, kind of getting smacked around, i.e. Gala, Theta, uh, a little bit sort of metaverse, things like that, Axie Infinity. But look, I mean, lots of things are getting hammered. Solana, wow, at a discount. That is something I have bought a little bit more of. Uh, again, not a whole lot. But look, double digit losses. It doesn't really matter what you're in at the moment. I did get a little bit of engine. Engine is something I really like, and that's something uh, I did pick up a small amount of. Again, and when I say small, I really mean small. We're not even talking like 0 0.01 of a percent of my total portfolio. Am I putting in anything? Like it really is just tiny bits. Definitely chipping away at Bitcoin when it gets down to certain levels and Ethereum. But again, it is just chipping away. So double digit losses like, whoa, we got to go a long way down. And then even we're still in high single digit losses. But some coins are holding better than others. Uh, sand is something I got a little bit of the other day. But again, very, very small amounts. All right, let's go have a look. The Bitcoin chart. So what we can see is at the moment we're seeing some green here so maybe the bottom is in again it came down it covered that cme gap that i was talking about now it's still way too early it's just you know clicked over sort of midnight stateside time this could easily uh, roll over and we go much lower but maybe that was the bottom is in maybe this chart was correct but look, I'm not so sure. I'm not going to be surprised if we don't come down and test 28-ish, 30,000, somewhere down around about there. But I'm guessing, well, I'm not even guessing. I'm hoping because I don't know. I'm hoping that if we do come down into here, it's just simply going to be a wick and we don't go a whole lot lower. All right, Ethereum, again, same thing, looking very, very similar. Hasn't quite come down to the $2,000 level that uh, I was, you know, thinking it might, but it has come down to around about here where I thought, where I kind of thought it might get down to around, you know, the $2,300, $2,400 level, but will it go lower? Again, that's what we're waiting to see. Now, the total market cap, this is where I was uh, not too far off. I did, you know, suggest that it might come down to the $1.4, $1.34 trillion mark, and we're not too far off there. We got down to, you know, very low 1.5, and we'll have to see. Look, I hope this holds, this holds, ladies and gentlemen. I'm like everyone else. I don't really want it to go lower, but at the same time, I'm okay with it going lower at the moment because I'm going to continue to just chip away at things here and there. But... Obviously, that gets a point where everybody gets scared, and I am as scared as the next person. But 
I'm not completely freaking out. I'm not panic selling anything. I'm just not going to do that. I've been around long enough to know that it really just doesn't pay off. I have had to cut some losses, but that wasn't due to panic selling. That was just due to, I think I bought way too high uh, and I didn't want to uh, risk you know, 80, 90% losses. Although don't get me wrong, some things will go to 80, 90% and there really were only a couple of things that I uh, sold out of and that was uh, Alluvium and Gala. Uh, and again, I only put a little bit in, but I you know, unfortunately bought at all time highs. So I was just happy to uh, sort of cut those losses. They were fairly small. And then just, again, that was part of the rebalancing and then just start to f rebalancing as in, you know, having more dollars on board. And I'm now using those dollars to slowly deploy back into things. But when I say slowly, I really do mean slowly. So now we've got to wait and see, is this kind of 1.5 trillion going to hold or are we going to get down to here around the 1.34-ish trillion dollar mark? That'll be interesting. I mean, it's scary if we could go even lower. But again, there's no safe haven at the moment. Here's this S&P 500. I mean, boom, look, it's almost come down to here uh, where I suspected it would. So the 4,300 sort of dollar level, we're not too far off. I mean, we are already in the $4,300 level, only just, but can we come right down into it to the 4,300 sort of 60-ish dollar level? And can we go lower? Everyone's still waiting to see what the uh, Fed might say. And I think, it's like Tuesday or Wednesday, I think they're going to talk about it. So I suspect we could, and again, never financial advice, but I think we could come lower over the next few days. And then depending on what it gets said by the Fed, will really depend whether we get you know, a rebound or we at least uh, flatten out this uh, fall or unfortunately go a whole lot lower. Uh, some interesting things going on. So the Dow Jones, again, there's no safe haven at it. There's no safe haven. Well, actually, that's not true. We'll have a look at the story very shortly. But it seems like there's no real kind of safe haven. S&P 500 down, Dow Jones down, NASDAQ down. Gold and silver sector was pumping up for a little bit, but even that's starting to come down. The ASX, the Australian stock market, has taken quite a tumble. I mean, boom, that was up at $95. Now it's down at $84. And that is a big drop uh, for, you know, for these kind of markets, it doesn't look all that big compared to, you know, crypto, if you're really crypto focused. But trust me, in the normal stock world, that is quite a significant drop. And look, it could go lower. You know, we could be seeing something like actually getting down to $80, uh, $78. And look, maybe even lower. We don't know just how low it's going to go. Now, something interesting though, the Dixie. So the dollar has been climbing. And this is interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is the safe haven asset, but it has been climbing basically since the start of this year. But what you got to remember is even if the Dixie climbs, it's the inflation rate that's killing us. United States, the annual inflation rate in the US has accelerated to 7%. And that's what they're willing to admit, ladies and gentlemen. That's not what it actually is. Again, a lot of people suspect it's more like 15%, possibly higher. And that happened in the last month of 2021. So can this turn around? Absolutely. But here's what I want you to keep in mind. This is the US debt clock. Look at all these numbers. They're going up, not down. And they're not going to start coming down in any significant way in any sort of time unless they continue to print money. Can they slow it down? Absolutely. They can slow the printing down, but they can't stop. They're in so much debt, they need to continue to print money. The US, and it is the reserve world currency, that's why I focus on it. I'm not from the US, but I understand that all monetary systems are based on the US dollar at the moment and no one's going to get away from that anytime uh, quickly. Could a big reset be coming and they shift things around? Absolutely. But until that happens, this is what we need to focus on. The debt is going up and up and up and up and up. Jumps up and down a little bit. It's not like it's all just continually going up, but some of it is going up and then some of it will come back down a little bit and then it'll go back up. But overall, it continues to just rise. 
this is what worries me and this is why they continue to print money because they need to stay on top of this if they don't print money they'll just end up in so much debt that they can never repay which is an interesting thought but look it's not all bad news Bitcoin's RSI is now at the most oversold level since March 2020 when we had the big crash of everything. So look, it's not to say it can't go lower, but if you buy at these levels, historically, they tend to be pretty good in the future. Again, we're at Fear and Greed Index 13. This is current. I looked at this not too far. So can we go lower? Absolutely. But in the long term, based on history, and history isn't uh, indicative of how the future will play out but it's the best thing we have but these tend to be really good times to buy look at that boom look at that boom really good buy boom now we have to wait and see again it doesn't mean it's picked the exact bottom because look this wasn't the exact bottom here it went a little bit lower but if you had a bought here and sold somewhere in between there you probably made some pretty good money. But again, this is more short-term kind of stuff. This is just 2020. Now, talking about possible safe havens, and I am definitely not saying this is a safe haven, but NBA Top Shot NFTs have quietly surged 72% in the last 30 days. Some people have come out and said they thought NFTs would hold fairly well and um, land in the metaverse and things like that. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go and check that, unfortunately. Uh, I've got some other things to do today, but that's just something we'll have to have a look at. Will they actually hold? And they don't have to hold all of their value. If they only drop 30% as much as the actual coins and things themselves, then they actually have held their value value pretty well. That's going to be the determining factor. Not will they simply, well, I bought a, you know, uh, a punk NFT at a million dollars uh, and it dropped down to 700,000. Well, it didn't hold its value. Well, if all the other cryptocurrencies dropped five fifty percent or more and all it did was lose 30%, then it has held its value pretty well. Considering all the markets are going down, we can't find a safe haven at the moment. But this could be just short-lived. Again, we don't know that this is going to hold. We're going to have to wait and see. So it's definitely scary times at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. I completely understand that. But your resolve is being tested. There's no safe haven. So unless you are already in cash and have a whole lot of cash, then congratulations to you. Not too many people were. Some people have good cash positions. Don't get me wrong, 100%. But there's, it's unlikely someone was sitting in all cash at the perfect time. So just remember that. No one knows where it's going. There's panic all over the place and people are worried about what the Fed's going to do, what inflation's going to be, are we going to go into a recession, are we going to go into a you know, Great Depression or something like that. So the markets are all over the place. But traditionally, if you buy good things at discounts, in time it pays off extremely well. Unfortunately, most people want to buy things when they've already gone up a whole stack. They have real trouble buying things when they're going down. And I can tell you right now, I'm buying things as they go down, and it hurts when I look at it two days later and it's gone down a whole lot more. But that's the way it is. All I look is, where is it from its old all-time high? If, and it's an if, but the good projects will, if it gets back to its old all-time high, how well am I going to do? And that's how I base my buys. And that's really what I'm looking at at the moment. There's discounts right across the park, ladies and gentlemen. Again, and let's go, let's have a look at this. Customize. Let's do where they were three months ago and six months ago. A lot of these are still in the green massively from just six months ago, even though they're down hugely at the moment and it's not to say they can't go down more but it just goes to show you the kind of money that can be made now not everything is doing great some things have been absolutely hammered but in the long run if you're in good projects over time you can do extremely well like there's projects now uh, down near 90 percent from their old all-time highs so if you're buying them now and they do recover and they do do well and you continue to kind of dollar cost average in even if it goes lower and they eventually make their way back to old all-time highs let alone go above that then you're going to make you know you're going to double your money 
in those things simply by going up, let alone again if you continue to dollar cost average, if they continue to go down and on the way back up until they get to their next old their, until they get to their old all time high, then your gains will be exponential. But again, I'm never going to offer you financial advice, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not telling you now's the best time to buy. I'm definitely not saying it can't get any worse. It can get worse. It can get a whole lot worse. But your resolve is being tested. Are you really here for the long term? Can you really buy a dip, particularly when it dips further than what you thought it was going to? Can you handle big market corrections? If you can't, then so be it. You've got to do what's right by you. But the volatility is your friend, both to the upside, well, particularly to the upside. We love it when it goes up massively. But it wouldn't do that if it didn't have massive downsides as well. Again, I'm not telling you what to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I have bought a few things here and there, but it hasn't been a lot. I'm really just picking away mostly at Ethereum and Bitcoin when they get to certain levels, but no major plays until we get some kind of result. The Fed comes out with its numbers and tells us exactly what it's doing, where it's going, the crypto re regulation, you name it, all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, just sitting back, chilling, waiting to see where it all goes. That's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment unless you're in NBA top shots or sitting on a whole stack of cash at the moment. I'll see you next time.